put on the uh, headset partly because I'm impatient and restless as an individual. And having spent a lot of time in boardrooms over the past almost 20 years now, believe it or not, and I'm only 28 years old, is that I've learned a lot. And I'm just going to share with you in the next 14 minutes some of the experiences of the past. Then I'm going to focus on the present. And lastly, the future. I am not a futurist, but I have seen some of the trends in boardrooms around the use of AI since 2014 in Hong Kong and in the US and Canada and not here yet, but watch this space. I'll tell you a quick little story. When I was in banking in North America, and I'm Canadian born New Zealander, by the way, if you're wondering where the accent comes from, is that I remember my first board meeting as head of strategy for a bank. I'm in the lift. There's two mature gentlemen in the lift with me. One's on his phone, booking tea time for golf. And the other one was deciding which restaurant to go to this evening. And also, can we check on his flights to get home? And he had his, one of his assistants with him as well. And this, I entered the boardroom, present the strategy for the bank, Q&A. And within the, my board papers, I had a little line that says, if you get to this point, I will give you a free bottle of wine. Do you think any board member noticed that? No. How many board members out of the eight were actually awake? Four. Two others were doing something else. One was doing a crossword puzzle, and the last one was asleep. And this was only in 2001. Fast forward to today, we've seen some changes in corporate governance. People pick on financial services because it's an easy target for the media, but also for customers and regulators. In fairness to regulators, Boards need to improve their performance. And the question mark for all directors here, aspiring directors, senior managers, senior executives, whatever role you play with in financial services, you would expect, even as a shareholder, that the directors are acting in the best interests of the company, correct? The thing that's important to note is how do directors stay informed on the industry? Second of all, if they have board papers that are 600, 800 pages, if the board meeting lasts a day or even two days, and most of it's compliance, reviewing insurance policies as a small example, do they have time for strategy? The financial services market is slowly being disrupted. And the, I use the word slowly, which is probably not a very good term to use, because it happens quickly. If you go back a few years, did anyone foresee that Uber would trash the taxi industry. Did anyone foresee back in 2007 that the iPhone or Android's version with other manufacturers would be what we're hooked on and we use, do everything with this? You're more likely to remember your phone than your wallet or your handbag. And how many of you with children know that they'll be watching television on their phone and eating at the same time? The challenge you have with electronics today in boardrooms is a lot of directors are doing the same thing. They're getting the board papers electronically, but are they using judgment effectively because of the information provided to them may not be accurate. Now we look at the present. In 2014, in Hong Kong, Knowledge Ventures, an investment firm, introduced a robo-director to assist in decision making on which companies to invest in. So imagine today how AI, through machine learning, is able to scan data within milliseconds and notice variations in information. So imagine a day I'm sitting in a boardroom. I'm not going to remember what happened three years ago, but my board papers will flag a discrepancy in the business case being presented to spent X on CapEx, OpEx going forward. But we did that three years ago. Why are we doing the same thing? Have we actually made a poor decision then to today? The same applies to how many boards with business cases they approve, review it year on year or even at various stages of the board meeting throughout the calendar on actually was that the right investment to make? How many board members actually walk the shop floor? I remember when I moved to New Zealand many years ago, I was interviewed by a journalist in Wellington. I probably got in trouble for this, but I think um, at the time Paul Reynolds who ran Telecom New Zealand forgave me is I, I challenge that board, did they actually walk the shop floor? And it's always safe to take a telco example in a financial services conference. I do the reverse at a telco conference, no, I'm joking. 
The better governed boards are often when they have an effective CEO and management team, and they have an effective chair with engaged directors around the table. Board members are part-time, management's full-time. So if you think about AI now, and I'm coming to my point, it's very important to think about the use of AI today is around the early stages of augmented decision making. We are not at a stage yet that, bless you, that AI will automate governance, as you would not want AI to automate your complete business model. But imagine this that if boards focus less on operational efficiency, but focus more on strategic decision making, how cool would that be? Everybody in this room familiar with Amazon? A stupid question to ask, of course. Amazon's business model is very simple. You purchase, it's shipped. With the use of AI analytics and the data that they're collecting and gathering on your buying behavior, your viewing behavior, believe it or not, as well as how often you go through the website and at what time of the day, what day of the week. Are there patterns around that? Is Bob constantly looking at toy cars? Is Mary constantly looking at toy cars? I used to do Barbie dolls, but that's not fair. Is Bob looking at Bob Barbie dolls? Possibly. The point here is, if you think about the buying behavior, could one day Amazon, through the board, change their business model? What do you think? If they know that I constantly look at books and I constantly look at the latest gadgets from smartphones through to other techie devices, and they turn the business model around, ship, then return. Obviously, it's not economically viable for Amazon to ship every time someone's looking at something automatically. A, there'd be regulatory issues at this stage, but the right to return is common. You can return pretty much anything you purchase on Amazon today. Does anyone know the statistics of the return rate on Amazon in North America? It is 95%. Pretty hard to return things in New Zealand, personally, when I shop online. There's a geographic distance, there's a cost of return. But if you think about their business model turning around, the same applies to financial services. Think about retail banking today. Cost to serve customers, but also the regulatory things about knowing your customer. But if you have an existing customer that you're not making much money on, but actually they have a high amount of money sitting in a savings account, if they don't have a relationship manager, you're not going to know what they're going to do with the funds. Great for your bottom line if they're sitting in a savings account earning less than 1%. But the reality is, is that a, a, a customer that you're going to retain? Most likely not at some stage. But through AI, if you could be scanning your customers' accounts with their permission, then sending them a little note once in a while saying, hey, we've noticed that you have $50,000 in your savings account. We also recognize that you have a mortgage. Would you like to reduce your mortgage? Also, we found, we've noticed that you've reduced your mortgage, and we're seeing this already exist in the marketplace. Can we suggest you get a batch now? The thing that's interesting about the use of AI in boardrooms is augmented decision making is a starting point. The fear factor for most directors is can they be replaced? As we were discussing earlier at the break, people worry about blue collar jobs disappearing through robotics and robots replacing those jobs. I think it's a great thing. We have a robot who vacuums in our home. Brilliant. I wish it could iron my shirts. That will come eventually. But when it comes to board members, if they can have the right information at the right time, it will help them with predictions. Now the challenge you're facing as human beings, judgment is the next step. You cannot ch replace judgment at this stage. And the sad thing is, if we do replace judgment, that would be the end of humanity. And that's not the topic for today. That would be at another conference in the future. But most importantly is, if we can have a stage where we also look at governance beyond AI, AI helps you in your decision making. But look at the board composition today. History is littered with boards and even recent examples of having no one with industry knowledge or expertise. No one around the table understanding how technology can improve operational efficiency and making the right business case approvals or not. The same thing applies to having diversity of thought in the boardroom. I'm a huge advocate of having everything from age, ethnicity to gender diversity. And What's missing is actually appointing people with the right skill sets who come from within that pool. As a white male, I don't want to be in a boardroom with another 
group of four or five or six white males. It's boring. Maybe it's fun at a wine tasting? No, not even. I think it's more fun. Men and women of all backgrounds and age and beliefs, political, personal, etc. The same thing applies to boards. How can a board have a finger on the pulse and actually know their customer? I was discussing this earlier at the break as well with someone. If you think about balancing shareholder value, the director's role in acting in the best interest of the company, as you know by law, is a gray area at times in people's approach. Managing the appropriate level of conflict of interest. Also, workload. How can a director who is on five listed company boards manage that portfolio effectively and actually be proactive in a boardroom? I heard a terrible story yesterday about a well-known director who was sleeping in the boardroom in New Zealand. I even heard a terrible story back in the 80s in New Zealand. A board was formed within financial services and the board minutes were drafted before the board meeting occurred for the directors to sign off on that. Do you actually think that's a level of governance? I mean, chatting to Rob Campbell recently, we do jo joked about this, and I actually mentioned it in a book I wrote last year, and it's not a plug, called Board Shorts, that's the plug, available on Amazon, that's a further plug. But more importantly, it was about banning the word governance. It's the point earlier around culture. It should be in everyone's DNA to have a 100% lev level of trust and integrity and honesty in everything that they do. That's the flaw we have as humans. So will AI take away that bias in decision making? No, it won't completely. Because today, if you go on Google and you search, and you happen to be an African American woman, you're most likely to be hit with an ad saying you might be arrested soon. And this is a fact. This is a, a professor out of Harvard who noticed this trend. And when she had a friend who was a white male doing the same Google search, there was no mention of potentially being arrested. Is that a shocking bias that occurs? The same thing is around investment decision making. You cannot have that type of inherent bias in the analytics or the algorithm, more importantly, to make a poor decision as a board because then you won't trust the technology. Online banking has succeeded over the years with original barriers of trust that people trust that their information will be secure. If there's a data breach, as I experienced one recently with uh, a New Zealand bank, where my credit card was suddenly replaced. I received a letter with a new card. It was a shame they didn't let me know because I actually had a bunch of purchases declined, but it did me a favor. I didn't end up buying that shirt from the UK and I probably didn't need another shirt. But then I couldn't buy tickets to a show because it was a breach through Ticketmaster in the UK. The point here is technology helps you in decision making, but let's not lose our judgment as directors. Also, as employees, you have the right to know, within reason, what happens in the boardroom. Do you have faith in your directors and your chair? I would expect the chair and directors of any company you work for today would be known to you. Not personally, it doesn't mean you're having a bar barbecue on the weekend at their home, because that would be a problem, because you're getting too close. But you should know who they are and understand why they were appointed, and how are they adding value around the boardroom. Should we have a skills matrix sitting in annual reports explaining why so-and-so was appointed and where they add value? And also the refresh cycle. It's not a job for life. The key thing here is, is the appropriate refresh at different stages. Now, I'm going to... I don't know how many minutes I have. There's supposed to be a countdown. Someone will tell me. <laughs> to close with the last 60 seconds, really quickly, as a good lead into fintech, is that if you think about the future of corporate governance, I wrote a piece recently on, should we approach the agile approach to corporate governance? There's pros and cons to that. But what we should do basically is not lose judgment, use AI to assist in decision making, but the board has to make a call on whether they will rely on that, but they can't legally today, therefore laws would have to change. AI and the law is another topic for another time. But lastly, the most important thing to think about is we can't replace judgment, because if we replace judgment through use of AI, sad thing to say, it's the end of humanity, and what are we doing to ourselves? Thank you very much. <laughs>